All right, hello everyone. Let's uh, work on solving this fluid mechanics problem. We're going to use the conservation equations to help us figure out this setup right here. All right, let's see what do we have. They are asking us to find the volumetric flow rate between two flat and parallel plates while the bottom plate is stationary and the top plate is moving with the velocity u. They want us to consider a distance between the plates as h, the width of the plate is w, uh, the, let's see, incompressible flow and steady state uh, conditions. They also tell us the, the pressure gradient in the x direction is a constant. All right, so let's get started. Here it is. This is everything they told us. So to get started, we know that we need to take into consideration our conservation equations, namely the conservation of momentum or otherwise known Navier-Stokes and conservation of mass. Okay, so let's take a look. We are dealing with a flow that is going in the x direction, right? We have our axes and this flow is going to be going this way because this plate is moving this way. Therefore, I'm going to write up the x component of the Navier-Stokes equation right here. All right, so we can see that we have a whole bunch of terms, but it's going to be good because we can cross out quite a few of them. First up, steady state. They told, they told us to consider steady state conditions. This means that when it comes to time, there is no change with respect to time. And in this whole equation, we can see that only the very first term depends on time. So let's go ahead and cross that guy out. Now let's take a look at u, v, and w. These three are the components of velocity. Since we are dealing only with a one-dimensional flow heading in the x direction, that means we have a u velocity, right? But we do not have any molecules, not even one, that would be heading towards this plate or this plate or for that matter going across in the z direction, right? None of that is happening. We only dealing with u. Every molecule of this fluid is heading in the U direction. So we can be confident that we can come back to our Navier-Stokes and cross out V equals 0, W equals 0. U we cannot cross out. We just said that V that exists. It has an actual value. Now let's take a look at this guy that is next to U, and that is the change of U with respect to X. This we will be able to cross it out from information that we're able to find out from the conservation of mass. And here it is. Let's write it up. Conservation of mass, incompressible steady flow. We can see that we have three terms, right? And we just said we are dealing with a one dimensional flow. Therefore, right away, we can cross these two guys out. And this is all we have left. The change of U with respect to X equals zero. All right, there you go. That's exactly what we wanted to hear. Come back to our Navier-Stokes and let's cross this guy out. Now, mathematically speaking, when you have something and you take a derivative of it and you end up with zero, then if you take a second derivative of that zero, that will be also zero. So this term in the Navier-Stokes can also be canceled out. All right, what else we have? Let's go to the last term, this one. We can con cancel this guy out because we are dealing with a 2D problem, right? Okay, now no, don't get confused. This is a one-dimensional flow, but we are analyzing it in two dimensions, X and Y, okay? We can cancel out the Z because this velocity profile that we're gonna have will not change as we would go into the paper into the z direction right so here at the edge let's say the velocity profile looks something like this then if we go to the center 
the velocity profile looks like that. If we go further to the end, the velocity profile looks like that. So, okay, as we would go across at the same location in the Z direction, right, at the same line, we would have the same velocity profile all the way across. There's no change, okay? So, therefore, we can be confident to cross this guy out and say goodbye to it. All right, let's see what else we have here. Oh, we have this one. These are the body forces, the Fx. Here, only body force we are considering is gravity. But we lock out in this case because all of our flow is heading in this direction, in the x direction, and gravity is in the negative y direction. So therefore, it does not bother us. So we can go ahead and cross out this component out of our formula as well. Okay, we did everything there is to do with this uh, equation, so let's clean it up. Here it is. I uh, copied and pasted here the Navier-Stokes equation and highlighted everything that we crossed out. So let's clean it up. On the left-hand side, we have zero. We crossed everything out. On the right hand side, we have uh, 1 over negative 1 over density, the pressure term plus kinematic viscosity times this second derivative of u with respect to y. Now, I usually like to change kinematic viscosity into dynamic viscosity, so we just multiply this whole equation by density. Here's the formula based on which I'm working with. There it is, this is what we get. Then I'll simply rearrange some stuff. I'll take the second derivative of u with y on the left hand side and everything over here is a constant. Remember they told us this, uh, that the change in pressure with respect to x is a constant, which is a good thing. Remember, uh, let's take a look. So the way it is right now with everything here being a constant, this is for us an ordinary differential equation, right? Nothing more complicated than if you would write it like x double prime equals, I don't know, seven or some constant, right? But if this would not be a constant, that means that this would turn into a partial differential equation, which would be a whole different chaos to solve, right? Would be a lot harder, all right? But we are not dealing with that. We only have a di ordinary differential equation. So what's next? We need velocity profile. That's what we're going for. And that is this guy here, u, but by itself. So in order to get there, we're going to have to take uh, an integral with respect to y of this equation two times. Okay? That's what we need to do. So here it is first, integral with respect to y. We can see that it will give us the first derivative of u with respect to y. On the right hand side we have this constant times y plus c1. The second integral will give us our coveted u equals this constant y squared plus c1 uh, times y plus c2. Now, mathematically speaking, this right here, what we just obtained, is the general solution of this differential equation right here. For, but for this problem right here, we need um, the velocity profile with actual values, right? Everything We need to know everything. But as of right now, we have two unknowns, c1, c2. Therefore, we need to find a particular solution of this uh, differential equation. And in order to do that, let's uh, find C1 and C2. For that, we need the boundary conditions. The first boundary condition that I'm going to rely on is right here. At this location, where y equals 0, u is equal 0. Now, we know that the bottom plate is stationary, right? So it's not moving. Therefore, because we are relying on the no-slip condition, that means that the very last molecule of this plate right here and the very first molecule of this fluid, they are stuck together. 
there's no velocity okay of course as we would go further and further away from the plate we have some velocity but right here at y equals zero they're stuck that means no velocity okay good so that's our first one the second one is going to be up here at this plate now this plate they told us that it is it has a velocity which is a big u okay so at y equals h the velocity is u same thing no slip condition right if this top plate would also be stationary then u would be zero again but since it is moving with velocity u we have no slip condition so the very last molecule of this fluid is stuck to the plate and it's moving with it with the same velocity therefore we have u equals capital u okay enough said let's go ahead and calculate uh, our two unknowns c2 and c1 with i i'm taking this second equation and plugging in the first boundary condition then plugging in the second boundary condition okay and this after we have them we come back to the general solution simply plug them in and we are able to find our particular solution which is the velocity profile and at this point we know every single term in it right all right so we have the velocity profile but this is not what they asked us to find right they want us to find the volumetric flow rate so let's proceed what kind of formula formula do we remember that can help us find this it's velocity times area well this is good when we are dealing with constants here we know that area is a constant all good but as we could see in the on the previous page we just find our u but it is actually a function of y right so it's not a constant therefore in order to use this formula we need to use the integral version of it which is right here velocity times a differential element of the area now shortly if you don't know which uh, with respect to what you need to integrate what unknown do you have in the uh, u you have y y is our unknown so therefore you're gonna have to integrate with respect to y simple as that that's very easy to remember a more in-depth explanation would be that uh, where do we have some change remember we said that uh, as we go uh, to across in the z direction we would not have change right it's all, all the same all the way across therefore there's no change there's no point in integrating that way if we, we don't capture any change we need to integrate going from zero to h to capture the change in this u because that's where it's changing down here the velocity let me draw it velocity profile is something like this right so we need to capture how this change affects our calculation therefore we're gonna integrate in this y direction okay so that's what the da breaks up into w times dy all right enough said there it is instead of the u plug in the uh, velocity profile that we just determined integrate from zero to h don't forget the, to multiply with w dy and all we have to do now let's solve this integral factor out some constants take care of the integral make sure you evaluate from 0 to h then we can finally arrive to our final answer which is the volume flow rate and there it is w over 12 times dynamic viscosity the pressure term minus h cubed plus u times w over 2 times h now make sure that uh, don't accidentally uh, think that this w and this w is uh, 
the component of velocity like uvw that's not what it is this is the the width of the plate okay that's what that that represents don't i know it's a sorry situation that they are both called w but don't confuse them all right very good so this is our final answer uh please, please subscribe and give a thumbs up to the video and have a great day thank you